We're going to look at expected value now. And the expected value definition is the average gain or loss of an event if the event or procedure is repeated many times. So you uh, do something once, you might win, you might lose. But if you do it a thousand times, you're going to win and lose. And based on the chance or probability of winning and losing, if you multiply it by the outcome, that's how you get the expected value. We add those up. So that procedure is right here. Compute the expected value, you multiply each outcome by the probability and the value of the outcome. Then you add up those products. And we'll be doing that here on each of these examples. If you add these up and you get zero, that's what's called a fair game, since neither side has an advantage. Whenever you go to a casino, the, reasons, the reason a casino is in business is because the games are unfair, meaning the house has an advantage if you play enough. The only chance that you win is if you don't play too much, you can win in the short term, but the house wins in the long term. Casinos don't make all their money off buffets and drinks and other things. They make it off uh, the games that are played there. They have an advantage. One game is roulette. We're going to look at roulette. Now, roulette has 38 spaces. There's 18 red, 18 black, which is 36. There's two green, so that makes 38. Now, normally, you place a bet on a single number, and if you bet a dollar, then you win $36. Now, that might sound like a good deal, but remember, there's not 36 spaces. There's 38 spaces. So, we have the expected value is equal to probability of win times the value of the win plus probability of a loss times the value of the loss. And we're going to go ahead and compute this here. So probability of a win there's 38 spaces and you bet 1 on a single number. So 1 would be the uh, one you would need out of 38 possibilities, and you win $36. So this is the win uh, outcome. Now we're going to do the loss. Probability of loss is the opposite or the complement to 1 out of 38. So there's 37 out of 38 chance you lose. And the value, you'll lose your $1, so you'll walk away with negative $1. That's the lose $1. Uh, all right, so how much would you expect to win or lose if you play the game repeatedly? That's the expected value. So we're going to go ahead and compute these. So we can rewrite this fraction as 36 over 38 minus, there's a negative here, 37 over 38. You can absolutely compute these into decimals and then subtract them. That's totally okay. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and use these fractions. So your average value be negative 1 over 38. And we're going to go ahead and compute that. Here's our calculator. Main 1. And this is negative. So it's 2.6 cents. I'm using the approximation, negative 0.02 six I think it was yeah all right so you'll lose on average two cents 2.6 cents each time you play the game and these are the units are in dollars here or 1 38th of a dollar is how much you should expect to lose if you play now if you played roulette you know that you don't have to bet on a single number which is what we did up here so we're going to play the same game except you pay you get paid two dollars if the ball lands on black and you lose one dollar if the ball doesn't uh, well actually pays out you get your money back plus the dollar you bet and if you look up above um, yeah so you get your dollar plus whatever they pay on that um, so in this one expected value is equal to probability of win times value of a win plus probability of a loss 
times value of a loss. All right, so probability you win. Now we're betting on black, 18 black, 38 total. So much higher chance of winning. There's 18 black, 38 total uh, times $2 plus probability of a loss is the complement of that, which is 20 of 38. So you're more likely to lose, and your value for losing, you'll lose $1. Okay. So 18 times 2 is 36. This doesn't seem right. Ah, uh, you win $1. You don't win $2. You, you don't lose your dollar you put down, but overall you will gain one dollar if you win this bet. I was hesitating because we're about to get a positive expected value, which would mean we should all go play roulette, but that's because the calculation, the number was incorrect there. Um, and this would be a minus right here. And of course, that 36 should be an 18 minus, so it's minus 2 over 38. Should be the same expected value that we got earlier. This doesn't seem right. Not sure what's wrong with this. You should I think the expected value should be negative one out of thirty-eight, but that's okay. I'm not a roulette expert, uh, but the rest of the games are fully explained here. So our next example: a friend offers to play a game with you in which you roll three six-sided die. If all die roll different values, you give one dollar. If any two die match, you get two dollars. What's the expected value of the game? Would you play? So the payouts are pretty obvious here. Uh, if you, you lose, so the value of losing, value of a loss is negative one, value of a win is two. Uh, now the probabilities are harder to compute. So let's think about this. If any two dice match, uh, that's one way to think about winning. Um, if all the die are different values, that's how you lose. So what would be easier? I think of all our different values. Probability that the three die get different values. Okay, so there's a few ways to think about this. Uh, so let's think of the total outcomes. Oh, we're definitely going to need more space here. All right, total outcomes, three, so we're rolling six times six times six, which is a big number, six times six times six, 216. Now, we want to roll all different values. So anytime that you put three in here like this, uh, I'm assuming an ordering. Uh, so we want to be very careful about that. Um, that's okay, it'll help us at least get started. So how many choices do you have in the first? The first die roll could be any of six choices, one, two, three, four, five, or six. The second die roll, however, 
there's only five choices for the second die roll. In the third die roll, there's only four choices. Oh no, this will work, yeah. So we have six, so this is the first, second, and third. And we're counting combinations. Six times, five times, four. So we have six times five times four it was 120. Okay, so that's how many different combinations have different numbers. Uh, it's tempting to draw a big grid for this, but we're rolling three dice, so I would need a three dimensional grid, which would not be possible to draw. So we're not gonna attempt it. All right, so probability of losing, which we just computed, how, how do you lose? You have three different rolls. So there's 120 ways to lose and 216 total ways to roll. And we'll just do this division, 120 divided by 216. Okay, there we go. We'll leave it as a fraction, maybe 5 ninths. Five tenths would have been one half. So this is a little bit more uh, than a half. Oh, that's probability of losing. Probability of winning. How do we compute probability of winning? It's not losing. So one minus probability of losing. One minus five ninths or nine ninths minus five ninths is four ninths. So that's probability of losing. So expected value. Uh, probability of win, value. Of a win plus probability of loss times value loss. Probability of a win, five ninths. The win value was somewhere up there. Two, you get two. Plus probability of a loss is four ninths. Actually, yeah, win you get two. Now lose, you give him one. So that would be a negative one for you. Five ninths times two is 10 ninths minus Four ninths. Ten minus four is five ninths. So that would be the expected value. It's positive, so you should definitely play this game with your friend uh, until they figure out that they're losing lots of money. All right, our last problem. A 40-year-old man in the U.S. has a 0 0.242 risk of dying during the next year. I don't know what that two is doing there. An insurance company charges $275 for a life insurance policy. Um, now I think this would be a two year life insurance. Let's write that in here. It's a two year policy that would cover it would have to be a one-year policy because it's only describing one year. So we're going to assume that it's a one-year policy. It's a one-year policy. So probability of We usually describe things in terms of wins and loses, win and loss. In this case, you would win the payout for life insurance if you are dead. So let's not call it a win. Probability you die times the value of dying plus probability of living times the value of living. These are the numeric values. These are not the actual moral values of living and dying here. 
Uh, and yes, insurance companies do calculate the cost of a life for a year for different age people and other conditions as well. All right, probability of dying right here. We have to turn this into a decimal. So we're moving the decimal point was here and it moves over twice. Now the value, now you wanna be careful, it's not just 100,000, but it's 100,000 you've already paid 275. plus the probability of living, which is the opposite or the complement of that probability. So that's one minus 0 0.00242. And the cost of this insurance policy will cost you, so it has a negative value to you because it costs $275. Okay, so let's go ahead and compute these. And I'm just going to type these right in. 0 0.00242 times, and I have to use parentheses here, 100,000 minus 275 plus parentheses 1 minus 0 0.002 or two, close parenthesis, times negative 275. So I'm trying to show all of this at the same time. Make sure I got it. 242, 100,000 minus 275 plus one minus 242 minus 275, okay. There we go, negative 33. Uh, this is in dollars, so put the unit in. All right, so let's talk about insurance for a minute. Every insurance has a negative expected value because if it had a positive expected value for the purchaser, uh, the in company would lose money every, uh, not every time they sell insurance, but if they sell enough insurance, they will lose money. So every insurance policy has a negative expected value for the consumer. And so for me, things that you can afford to replace, like if you buy a toaster and they offer you insurance at the store for a dollar or two, they've already computed the expected value uh, for you will be negative. So for them will be positive. If you can afford to replace the item, you should not buy insurance. Uh, there are big exceptions, life insurance, you won't be around, so uh, if you need to take care of other people, in life insurance is a good idea. Things like car insurance and house homeowner's insurance. Uh, car insurance covers other people as well if you injure them, but homeowner's insurance, unless you can afford to replace your home and everything in it, uh, which most people can't, you, there is a negative value of homeowner's insurance, but because you cannot afford to replace your home and everything in it, that's why homeowner's insurance is a good idea. So when it comes to insurance on something moderately expensive like a laptop, you just want to think about, can I afford to replace this laptop or not? And if the answer is yes, I can afford to replace it. You should not buy insurance because insurance always has a negative value. So it just comes down to whether or not you can afford to replace the item. And so things like car insurance and life insurance have a different decision to make because uh, you you don't actually know the negative value or the the value of the what happens if you lose that um, and that will vary so that is the end of expected value and hopefully you can uh, work on your homeworks now and good luck on your quiz and your test